students now in last session we discussed some of the properties of the fluid which were specific density specific gravity mass density and weight density surface tension and viscosity today we will discuss another property of fluid which is capillarity okay now first of all what do we mean by the term capillarity so capillarity is defined as rise or fall of a liquid in a small tube when tube is immersed vertically in the liquid remember that your tube is immersed vertically in the liquid so as you can see here that there is a different diameter of glass tubes are here okay different diameter are there the liquid liquid rises in this glass tubes the rise of liquid or if there is some fall of liquid then this rise or fall of the liquid is called capillarity okay so capillarity is expressed normally in terms of centimeter or mm capillarity is a height so its unit is centimeter or mm and the value of capillarity is depend on value of rise or fall is depends on weight of the liquid diameter of this glass tube and surface tension of the liquid capillarity depends on this criteria now mercury mercury is the only fluid where there is a capillary down or depressed down as you can see in that diagram that in a water there is a capillary rise the water the liquid rises but in a mercury the liquid is depresses or there is a capillary fall in other liquid like pyrocene ket pe petrol kerosene or oil there is a capillary rise and in a mercury there is a capillary fall as you can see in this diagram in a mercury indicated by red color there is a capillary fall in the mercury so now we will discuss the derivation of capillary rise okay as you can see in this diagram that a container is filled up with water you can see that a container is filled up with water now if you insert a small glass tube vertically in this container you insert a small glass tube vertically in the container okay so liquid from the container rises into the glass tube the liquid rises to the glass tube and the rise of liquid is h here rise of liquid if we are considering water then rise of water is up to height h so here h is called capillary rise and on this surface as you can see in the diagram that in surface of glass tube there is a acting surface tension surface tension is acting on the free surface okay so surface tension is sigma and sigma is acting at angle theta as you can see that sigma is acting at angle theta so there are two components of sigma because sigma is acting inclined at angle theta so vertical component of sigma is sigma cos theta and horizontal component is sigma sin theta okay so in this diagram a container is filled up with water you immerse a small glass tube of diameter t in the water so liquid rises up to height h so that h height is called capillary rise now on a free surface in a glass tube surface tension is acting sigma at angle theta so there are two components sigma cos theta acting vertically and sigma sin theta acting horizontally if glass tube immerses vertically in a liquid then above the free surface the rise of liquid is known as capillary rise this is a definition of capillary rise now here sigma is a surface tension of the liquid theta that is a angle of contact between liquid and the glass tube normally for water we are taking theta 0 degree theta for water is 0 degree and theta for mercury we are taking 130 degree you have to remember this values for solving examples 
theta for water is 0 and theta for mercury is 130 degree. Now, the weight of the liquid above the free surface of the container. Above free surface of the container, the weight of the liquid is acting in downward direction. So, the weight of the liquid of height h in a glass tube is w. What is the equation for w? w equals to rho p and g. Rho p g. Where rho that is the density, p that is the volume and g that is the gravitational constant. Now, what is the equation for volume? Volume equals to area into height. Area into height. That gives you volume. So, here W which is acting in downward direction. So, W equals to rho V into G. You can replace V by area into H. Now, area of this circular glass tube is pi by 4 d square. So, your equation become pi by 4 into d square into H into rho into G. So, weight which is acting in downward direction is W and the equation for W is pi by 4 into d square into H into rho into G. That is your equation number 1. Now, which component is acting in vertical direction? Upward direction. As you can see in this diagram that sigma cos theta. Sigma cos theta is acting in upward direction. Okay. And surface tension is always acting from periphery or circumference. So, in a vertical component of surface tension which acting upward equals to sigma into circumference into cos theta. The cos component is acting vertically. So, your vertical component is sigma circumference is pi d into cos theta. This is your equation number 2. Now, in equation number 1, the weight is acting in downward direction. In equation number 2, the sigma cos theta surface tension is acting in upward direction. Now, at equilibrium condition, these two forces, downward and upward, must be equal and opposite. So, you can equate equation number 1 and 2. So, your equation is pi by 4 d square into h into rho into g. That is your equation number 1 equals to sigma into pi d into cos theta. Equation number 2. So, your equation is like this h equal to sigma into pi d into cos theta. You make subject h. Here h is your subject because h is your capillary rise. So, h equals to sigma into pi d into cos theta divided by pi by 4 d square into rho into g. So, if you are making h as a subject, then equation for h is 4 sigma cos theta by rho g d. Now, here sigma 4 sigma cos theta by rho g t, where sigma is a surface tension, theta that is the angle of contact, rho is a density, mass density of the liquid. If water is given, then mass density is 1000 kg per meter cube. And if mercury is given, then mass density is 13600 kg per meter cube. G, that is the acceleration due to gravity. And D, that is diameter of the glass tube. So, here equation to find out capillary rise or capillary fall. That is H equals to 4 sigma cos theta by rho g d. So, this is a property, this is again a property of fluid which is called capillary. Now, our next theory is types of fluid. Types of fluids. In this world, there are different types of fluids are exist. But in this subject, we are going to deal with some type of fluids here, which are first is ideal fluid, second is real fluid, third Newtonian fluid, fourth non-Newtonian fluid, fifth ideal plastic fluid, sixth incompressible fluid and seventh 
is a compressible fluid now we will uh, discuss this types of fluid in detail so now your first fluid is ideal fluid now what do you mean by the term ideal ideal means perfect okay there is no any fluid in the world exists in perfect condition ideal fluid is completely an imaginary fluid remember that ideal fluid is a imaginary fluid the fluid without viscosity without surface tension or without any other properties that fluid is called ideal fluid and which is an imaginary fluid now second type of fluid is real fluid water petrol kerosene air we are dealing with the fluids which are in real so they are called real fluid the fluid with viscosity or with properties of the fluid that fluid is called real fluid like water air petrol etc now third type of fluid is newtonian fluid now we discussed in newton's law of viscosity if you remember that in newton's law of viscosity we discussed that tau is a shear stress and du by dy is a shear strain if in a newton's law of viscosity if tau that is your shear stress du by dy that is your shear strain tau proportional to du by dy that fluid is called newtonian fluid if tau proportional to du by dy that fluid is called newtonian fluid and examples of newtonian fluid are water benzene etc okay now next is non newtonian fluid like tau is your shear stress du by dy is your shear strain if in any fluid tau does not proportional to du by dy tau does not proportional to du by dy that fluid is called non newtonian fluid and the examples of non newtonian fluid are plaster paste gel etc next is ideal plastic fluid so in a ideal plastic fluid shear stress tau is more than yield value and shear stress is proportional to shear stress here tau is more than yield value and also tau proportional to du by dy that is called ideal plastic fluid again it is a ideal fluid and it again a imaginary fluid next is incompressible fluid okay. if you are taking water and gases water and gases both we are considering as a fluid okay you can compress water at some extent and you also can compress gases so water and gases both are compressible fluid or incompressible fluid okay water we are considering water as a incompressible fluid remember this word then water or any liquid we are considering liquid as a incompressible fluid and gases as a compressible fluid in a incompressible fluid the density does not change density of liquid does not change by applying external pressure which is known as incompressible fluid and all the liquids are generally considered in this category incompressible fluid now next is compressible fluid in a fluid when you can compress that fluid by applying external forces if your fluid compresses by external forces that fluid is called compressible fluid and normally all the gases we are considered as a compressible fluid so now this is in this lecture we discussed types uh, some properties like capillary of uh, fluid and different types of fluid now in further lecture we will discuss that uh, pressure measurement devices thank you